The biggest international netball event, Vitality Netball World Cup, will have its 16th edition staged on African soil for the first time. The competition will take place at the International Convention Centre in Cape Town from the 28th of July to the 6th of August. Hi, Sudumelang. Good evening. My name is Tabo Malokwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we are joined by Bruce Davidson, the media manager of the Netball World Cup, to tell us about uh, the tournament, you know, and also what is it that we can expect uh, in this uh, very wonderful showpiece. Uh, Bruce, thanks very much. Um, welcome to Soweto Today. Good evening. Good to be on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Much appreciated. You know, I know excitement, you know, uh, it's, it's all over the country. We've been seeing you guys with uh, the um, uh, trophy tour and all these kind of things. Uh, but, you know, I want us to talk about, you know, what qualified for the tournament being brought to the continent, particularly in Cape Town, for the first time on African soil. I mean, you guys must be excited. Very excited. And we go back to 2018 when uh, the president of Netball South Africa, Cecilia Molokwani, had this dream of bringing the Netball World Cup to um, South Africa and to, for Africa to host the first ever Netball World Cup. And her dream was, uh, became a reality when um, the pitch was sent in and we got into the final uh, running. Uh, it was between New Zealand and South Africa who would host. And um, South Africa were able to pip New Zealand, which was a great, great uh, feather in the cap of mm -hmm. Netball South Africa and South Africa because New Zealand have hosted very successful Netball World Cups. They are the reigning world champions. They've been in the top two of Netball in the world for years. And, um, you know, I just think that the whole pitch was uh, uh, crafted very well by Netball South Africa and their, their agents um, uh, because there's a very good... Uh, uh, story behind it in that there are going to be nine wooden netball floors which are of high value yeah. donated not only to each of the regions in South Africa but to some African countries after the Netball World Cup and I think that that was the 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 the, the, the pipping post uh, compared to New Zealand that there would be a good legacy after the Netball World Cup because those floors are very expensive uh, you, can, can, you can only develop the best netball players in the world on a sprung wooden floor and, um, and I thought uh, that uh, Netball South Africa made a very good call with mm -hmm. government to, um, in the pitch, announce that they would be donating these floors not only to the different provinces of South Africa but also to some African countries. So mm -hmm. it is a truly African showpiece. You know, I'm looking at, uh, you know, the teams that will contest this year. Maybe you can just take us through those teams, particularly the ones that are coming from the African continent. I mean, I saw a lot of, um, you know, more like promotional materials from the different teams here from uh, the African continent. It looks like everyone is really excited. Very excited. And African netball in the past couple of years has made huge strides. In fact, it's a, becoming a dominant force in international netball. We only used to have Malawi and uh, South Africa in the top 10. Yum. And all of a sudden we've got South Africa at number five. We've got Malawi who's jumped to number six, we've got Uganda in the top 10, we've got Zimbabwe, um, and all four will be taking part. And four out of 16 nations, considering this is a global showpiece, is a very, very good representation. And it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a feather in the cap for African netball, um, for all the efforts they're putting in into really growing the sport within the continent. And all of a sudden we've got four teams representing the continent at uh, this global showpiece in Cape Town. Mm. Um, I mean, I saw your trophy with, uh, you know, the netball president, Cecilia Molokwani and the rest of you guys, you know, traveling across the country. How has it been in terms of the reception? I saw when it was in uh, Rustenburg, I saw it when it was in Limpopo, you know, uh, Bloemfontein, excitement all over. People were actually excited when they saw the tour bus also. But just tell us, how was the reception from the respective uh, cities? It was overwhelming. In fact, I, I actually couldn't believe as media manager the absolute media frenzy around this trophy arriving from London in uh, uh, Durban. Uh, that's where it started off and touring around. We've just had incredible response from not only the media but the public. And there's been hundreds and thousands of people turning out 
in the most remote areas of our country. It's traveled all over. I love the, the handover that took place at the Blokrans Bridge between the Eastern Cape and the Western Cape uh, at a, 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 a Khoi San village yeah. settlement there, just embracing all the cultures um, and going to seriously some very small outlying areas and, um, and to some Kasis, which was so good to actually bring the trophy to the people and not expect the people to go to the trophy. And um, it's, it's been unbelievable. There's just been such a, a good vibe. And, and we've got to thank South Africa for embracing uh, the, the arrival of the trophy. And that set the tone, as you said, for a very exciting Netball World Cup, which is only 19 days away. It's quite daunting, but uh, mm. we're very excited. And um, things are really happening in Cape Town. I've been down there recently and uh, seen what's planned and um, some big announcements even coming in the next couple of days about new sponsors that have wanted to be on board because they've seen the excitement of the trophy tour, which is very exciting uh, for the Netball World Cup. After the ad break, I want us to talk about what is it that we can expect uh, when we head down to Cape Town in 19 days, as you said. Well, the hosting of the netball tournament has brought so much excitement and pride to South Africans, especially the national team, as it will serve as an additional motivation to drive them to push their limits and perform at their best. I want us to take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Stay with us. Welcome back, you're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are still in conversation with Bruce Davidson, who is the media manager of the 2023 Netball World Cup. Uh, you know, talking all things uh, 2023 Netball Tournament, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, taking place in Cape Town from the 28th of this month until the 6th of August. Bruce is still uh, joining us in studio. Bruce, thanks very much for staying on. I want us to talk about the theme for this year. I saw the mascot, you know, exciting. Quite a lot of, um, you know, um, um, things that are happening on social media with uh, the Netball um, World Cup. Uh, people are actually welcoming everything that you guys have been doing. As, as we said, it's an exciting one because it's on the African soil. The theme for this year, uh, you know, what did you look for? And what is it about? We wanted to embrace Africa. We wanted to embrace the continent. Um, because this is not only South Africa's Netball World Cup, it's Africa's Netball World Cup. And I thought that uh, Lesatsi, the, 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 the mascot, is a little meerkat. Yeah. And very interesting, someone from outside South Africa designed it because it was a competition, a global mm. competition. And, um, uh, and it, 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 it epitomizes um, the, the craftiness of the cultures that we have. The, 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 the smartness, the meerkat is always a very smart hunter, is a very smart and alert um, animal in, 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 in the African bush, and it is native to South Africa and Africa. So it was a perfect um, mascot, but we've, we've embraced the colors of Africa. We've looked at the sunsets, mm. we've looked at the sunrises, we've looked at the savannas, we've looked at the mountains, and uh, we've also looked at the way the cultures embrace color into what they wear and how they celebrate their cultures. And it, it is a very, very interesting mix of, of, of a bit of everything. Um, the sun rising, the excitement of the day, the sun setting, um, the rest after the day, yeah. knowing that the sun is going to rise again. So yeah, it's, 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 it's a combination of everything, but Africa is going to be celebrated in all its glory um, at the CTICC in Cape Town. We're even having a sustainable um, village where a craft uh, people from around the country will be through South African tourism, um, being able to sell their crafts and showcase their crafts to these hundreds of thousands of foreigners that are traveling to Cape Town to watch the Netball World Cup. And when we talk about hundreds of thousands, we've got a lot of tourists coming in. It's billions worth of income coming into yeah. the city and the country. I mean, I mean, we know that the team is a 15-woman squad, you know, a hybrid of professionals there and those that come through the ranks. But let's talk about uh, what is it that we can expect in uh, this year's edition. As you said that, I mean, a lot of people will be flocking to the mother city, um, you know, already maybe most of them are already 
in the country just to sightsee and all these kind of things. What is it that we're expecting in this showpiece? Well, first of all, I think if anybody hasn't watched a netball game at this level, you're missing out because netball is fast and furious. And um, these teams are the best 16 in the world. Remember, the top six teams uh, on the world rankings qualify in South Africa. The Spa Proteus qualified as hosts, yeah. but then the rest have to qualify. So there's been an absolute um, vibrant lot of competition over the last two years since the 2019 World Cup in Liverpool, where teams have been fighting for places for uh, the Cape Town event. And when you see uh, players like um, players coming from Sri Lanka, for instance, they are so tall. We've got seven foot players there. It's going to be interesting. The Jamaicans are just a vibe, a total vibe. Yeah. And they're all tall. The Australians, uh, the current world number ones, unbelievable to watch how fast they can move the ball from a circle to goal. It's, it's just phenomenal. I mean, I was watching the last game that we had with Australia, the one that ended with a tie. It was a game to watch. A game to watch. And, you know, we've got the former Australian great coach, Norma Plummer, Yum. coaching our Spa Proteus. So we've got an advantage there because she knows how they play. And, of course, the, the, the defending champions, New Zealand, not forgetting the England uh, Roses, uh, who the first team to arrive on Friday, which is very exciting. Jamaica arrive on Saturday. Some of the teams are coming in a little early Yum. and they're going to Hermanus. They're going to Stellenbosch to train and then will come into the tournament in Cape Town, closer to the tournament. So it's very exciting exciting that these teams are taking it so seriously. They've put a lot of work in and teams from all around the world. I'm so excited to see uh, teams from Tonga, Samoa coming in. They, they come from far, far out in the Pacific. P Wales, uh, there's some really good teams. Barbados, uh, uh, Rihanna, we all know Rihanna. <laughs> she loves netball yeah. and she's been at the last three Netball World Cups. So who knows? She might be in Cape Town supporting Barbados. So let's see. And Harry Styles, absolute netball freak. He's been supporting the England Roses for the last couple of World Cups. Who knows? Harry might be in Cape Town. So this is this is a, 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 going to be a very exciting. And yeah. if you can't obviously be at the, the event, watch it on TV because it's on both Supersport and SABC, which is great. Exciting stuff indeed. I mean, I want to talk also about our readiness as the Spa Pro Tears and uh, also looking at uh, the fitness of the team. I know that, uh, mm. you know, ahead of the World Cup, uh, we had quite an intense preparation also as the Spa Pro Tears. Uh, we can see the girls are in shape and stuff. But how has it been in terms of our preparation? And also, um, do you think that it's receiving uh, you know, the tournament is receiving support and recognition it deserves, uh, you know, compared to other sports in the country. Well, first of all, let's talk about the Spa Proteus. They've never been more prepared for a, a World Cup. Um, uh, they've been in Stellenbosch training. A lot of the players in the Spa Proteus Final 12 uh, play in international leagues, so they've been doing that. Yeah. And then the rest of them have all been playing in the Telcom Netball League, which has only recently ended a week ago. And so they really are ready. They fit and they're prepared. There are one or two players with a few niggles, but they're such a good medical team looking after the Spa Proteas that they'll all be in good shape. And there's an incredible mix of older players and younger players, yeah. which makes it very exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing the Spa Proteas do well, but I know it's going to be a tough and tall order because the New Zealanders who are out to defend their title, yeah. the England, Roses and Australia and Jamaica are all out to prove a point here in South Africa. Second question, South Africa's embraced this. Oh, it's been so exciting. There's such a big netball fraternity in South Africa. You know that there's four and a half million netball players that play the sport. It's the biggest women's sport and it's the second biggest sport after soccer. And every single community of netball has really, really embraced this tournament. And we found that even in the small outlying areas in the Northern Cape and deep rural KwaZulu-Natal, there's been small mini World Cup netball tournaments. And that's so cute because the schools have embraced it, the universities have embraced it. Now this is going to be a, 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 a buzz. I can tell you now, it's going to be a buzz for those 10 days. And I'm really, really excited about it. And uh, the interest, just to end off that question, we had just over a thousand media applications for a 300 capacity media center. Now that's more than the Springboks get, 
in applications. That's more than a lot a Cricket World Cup got. So we really are excited that there's a buzz, not only amongst the people of South Africa, but amongst the media globally. And I'm very, very excited about that. I think women's sport this year in particular, we saw the success of the Women's World Cup. We've seen Banyana Banyana go down, uh, down under for the, for the Soccer World Cup now. It's, it's the year of women's sport. And of course, the Netball World Cup's played a big part of that uh, success in South Africa. You know, I'm glad that uh, you did touch on the issue of women's sport, the importance of it, mm. and also how this uh, prestigious tournament will definitely, I mean, you said earlier on that it's going to pump in billions, uh, you know, millions of rands because uh, the kind of uh, contingent that's coming to the country. It looks like, uh, you know, tourism will definitely be booming in Cape Town. But after the ad break, I want us just to talk about uh, the initiative of Netball Fridays, the importance of that, and also getting the country to rally behind this bar protest. Just the event itself, you know, on these uh, next uh, few days, as we will be, um, uh, you know, excited to watch it on all our screens and rooting for our girls that we will continue after the ad break. By hosting this World Cup, South Africa will be creating a legacy for the youth and upcoming generations that inspire to play netball. These are exciting times indeed. You know, everyone is looking forward to that. Let's park it there. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Mulukwani. We are wrapping up our conversation on the 2023 Netball World Cup. Uh, Bruce Davidson is the media manager for Netball World Cup, which will be hosted in Cape Town from the 28th to the 6th of August. He's still joining us in studio. Bruce, thanks very much for staying on. I want us to talk about uh, the importance of Netball Fridays, you know, this important uh, initiative. We've been seeing people on Fridays wearing the t-shirts. I mean, us in the media, we've been doing it for quite some time now. You see people on the streets, on the malls. How has it been? And just the importance of that. Very important. And you know, it had to be launched. And uh, Netball South Africa, through Cecilia Molokwani, launched Netball Friday um, over a year ago, um, embracing South, asking South Africa to embrace the Netball World Cup on a Friday by wearing a Netball Friday t-shirt. And they sold out those t-shirts. They were all different colours um, before the official merchandise like I'm wearing now was launched and uh, people wore it. We saw it in walls, we saw it in gyms um, and uh, we really did a, a, a best effort to promote netball on a Friday just before the weekend. We know that the vibe in South Africa yeah. is on a Friday and it goes in so it worked very well and I, I must say from Parliament right down to um, different people in cities, I saw mayors, I saw politicians, as you said, ministers all wearing the Netball Friday t-shirt and, and it was embraced. Then when Puma launched their re replica uh, yeah. gear, it sold out. You can't get them. And it was just amazing because people now really want to be part of Netball Friday and be part of this World Cup. So it's been a very, very important part of the build up to the Netball World Cup. And I think that it has certainly helped create this lovely netball vibe that we're going to see in the next couple of weeks. Let's talk about uh, the importance of netball, you know, as a sport, particularly in this country. I mean, we are a country of uh, so many uh, sporting codes, uh, you know, the rugby, football, uh, you know, hockey, the athletes, you know, the field, I mean, track and field, mm -hmm. we, we're seeing they've been doing very well, you know, from world champs and all these kind of things. But I want us to touch on netball as a sport, the importance of that. So important. It is easy, it's cheap, and it's a team sport. And it has touched every single family. I doubt a family in South Africa hasn't been touched by netball. Someone in the family has paid netball. It is massive sport. And it's not only played by girls, there's over 400,000 men that play netball. And they're good, and they love it. They have national championships, they have leagues. So netball to me is a very important part of developing an equal and healthy lifestyle in South Africa. Because netball is fast, it's not a contact sport, so it's, it's, it's safer than maybe the basketball where there is a lot of contact. Yeah. And I do believe that um, netball is contributing greatly to a sporting nation. And um, I'm so pleased that 
through um, the presidency of Cecilia Mulekwani and her, her executive, um, they've taken netball to another level. It's definitely gone to another level. Yeah. It's not one of those sports now. It is a sport. sport People yeah. want to be part of it. There's investment coming in. People want to be part of the sexiness of sport that's going forward. And I'm very, very excited for the future of netball. And I think this Netball World Cup is going to take the sport to another level. Because I, I wanted to talk to you about, uh, you know, um, netball, as you said now, it's a sport now. We're seeing, um, I mean, South Africa has a national men's team of netball. Also. Yeah. I saw them competing on the African continent just recently. And, you know, they've been doing very well. But, um, you know, we haven't seen a lot of men coming through, particularly in, 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 in playing this sport. But I can see now there's quite a lot of introduction at different townships across the country, whereby you would see men, mm. women in the very same sport. It shows, uh, the, you know, how things are developing in this country. Yeah, it's, the, the, the development of women's, of men's netball has been a, a, a phenomena in the last couple of years. I think it was brought about, you know, basketball took a long time to get off in South yeah. Africa and it's still struggling to really be where it should be. So men got tired of waiting. So they wanted to play something that was similar and they started playing netball. And in fact, they're so good. They're very good, very our netball good. team. Yeah. And they're going to be invited to the FOST Five, which is the first ever world championships for men, FOST Five. And they're going to be part of the Netball World Cup for men, which is going to also be a first ever. And we, we're even going to have an African championships, which is a first ever in, in netball. A, a very big priority of African netball and of world netball to promote men's netball. And what I'm also finding is that even Norma Plummer, our Spa Protea coach, she's using the men's team to, for our Spa Proteas to train against because of the aggressiveness and styles of the opponents that our Spa Proteas should expect in the Netball World Cup. And our men's team has got that perfect, perfect competition for them. And they are, and they're doing well. But funny enough, the girls are still beating the men. Yeah. So the men have got to catch up, but they will catch up because their opportunities are going to come. Yeah. Because they haven't received the sponsorship and the recognition, but they are. You were quite right. They've just been to the Caribbean, did very well over there. And I can see men's netball also jumping up in numbers, leaps and bounds. And netball's, netball's going to be in mm. soccer and, and cricket and rugby. You better watch yourselves because <laughs> netball's on its way up, I promise you, in, in big ways. It's the fastest growing sport at the moment. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's an important point you, you, and good question you raised. Um, just lastly, in brief, before we close the show, um, the words of advice that you would give to parents, uh, you know, who may find it afraid to just get their kids into venturing into netball as a career. You know how parents react to sports as a career. What advice would you give to those young mothers, young fathers out there that would want their kids to go through the ranks? Well, I think it's very important that they know that all schools have netball. That's a great starting point because not all schools have every sport. So I would encourage them to participate in their school netball um, teams in their leagues and slowly they'll progress if they've got the talent into the next level which is regional, provincial, national and who knows they could be playing for the men's team or the Spa Proteas and that's a very big reality but netball is a very sociable game it's a team game there's a lot of competition it's fast everything's done in, in an hour and 15 minutes four quarters each of so many minutes depending on the age groups no, netball's, I, I, was con, I was a tennis lover. Yeah. I came into netball, I'm converted. I don't play it, and I should be, but you know, at my age, I've got to be careful <laughs> what I do. But I love it, and I'm a fan, and I can tell you something, netball, my, my daughter will definitely play netball, because I know how much it can do for them, and also it's such a healthy environment. Very good competition, healthy competitiveness. Bruce Davison, thanks very much for making the time. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Much appreciated. That was Bruce Davison, the media manager of the 2023 Netball World Cup, uh, you know, which is currently taking place in Cape Town from the, um, the 28th to the 6th of um, August. Uh, there, you know, talking to us about uh, the readiness of our national squad as well as the importance of celebrating Netball Friday. Well, that's how we wrap it up. For today's episode of Soets Today, remember we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. 
simply send us an email at SowetoToday at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. From myself, Tabo Molokwani and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching.